guess for both you guys, just getting back to work, you know, what's the mood around practice been like after, you know, just hadn't lost a game in a, a long time around here. <laughs> what was, what's the mood been like? I think everyone's fairly optimistic. You know, it is what it is. Obviously, we'd love to do that back and to play in a different way, but um, there's only like one route we can go right now. And so I think that's what everyone's focused on. And that's what Coach Chavos talked about, gotten us focused on. And yeah, to piggyback off that, um, I feel like we, as a team, we did, we, we needed that to look ourselves in the mirror and evaluate what we have to do, do better and what we did and be able to fix it. Coach said after the game, this can either springboard you forward, can be a turning point or it could send you into a spiral. How do you avoid letting this spiral and one loss becomes two? I think you just be a man. I think that's life. Adversity is in life. And so we're going to face some adversity right now. We're going to hear about it from other people. And there's going to be thoughts in our own head of it's going to, the easier thing is going to be to give up right now and our expectations of this grand season to let that go. So that's the natural thing to do. And I think that what a man would do and what a team like the team that we want to be would do is to uh, to press forward and continue striking the stone, like our motto is. You guys are back on the practice field uh, this morning. What was it like? You know, just the energy around the team and everything. Um, energy was great. Energy was great. Uh, both sides, offense and defense. It was, um, I would say, way more enthusiasm as of don't take this for granted because I feel like that was the the vibe. You know, we get in other games, we get more games, so definitely just take, not taking it for granted. So I feel like way more enthusiasm. Same question, Ben Lee. I mean, it's the first time you guys are coming off a loss in two years because you haven't prepared for another game since the Fiesta Bowl. You know, the season was there. Yeah, that was my first time with this staff to go into a Monday morning meeting. Or today's Friday, but kind of like a Monday morning meeting uh, after a loss. So that was unique. But it's just like what he said. It's, it's easy to take winning for granted. And we don't realize uh, how lucky we've been. And you got to go back to what does the process look like that gets you to that place where you're winning games like we did last year and like we have this year. So. Sorry, Bentley, are you a captain on this team? Yes. Um, Coach was talking last night at the Mellow Mushroom thing about having the captain's meeting yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily what was said in that, but what kind of responsibilities were put on the captains to maybe help lead during this um, time of adversity? Mm -hmm. I think that um, the main takeaway from that was that change comes from within. It's an internal thing. So when you want a team to change and when, when you want to um, have a different attitude and show up to games a different way, it's got to come from within. And so that's on us as players um, to change the way that we approach things and to come more excited. We haven't really played like there's a chip on our shoulder. And lucky for us, I think we have a chip on our shoulder now. So, But that change has got to come from within. And we talked a lot, a lot about stuff like that. Kind of going off the chip on your shoulder comment. <clears throat> Obviously, you guys playing. We're playing for a lot this year. College football playoff, all that kind of stuff, puts a lot of pressure on you. Your conference championships goals are still ahead of you. Does your mentality kind of shift and know you don't have to be as perfect? You know, maybe reach college football playoff. You can still reach your, your conference championship goals. Does pressure come off on that? Um, I mean, yeah. So, I think the ideal mentality is just to, like every week it, focus on the team that we're playing. And it's easy to get ahead of yourself and think about stuff like the playoffs. But um, the reality is, is we play Jacksonville State this week, and that's who we're going to focus on. And yeah, the goals of winning conference championship are still there, and the aspirations are the same. Jerome, looking at uh, Jacksonville State, you know, high-powered offense. <clears throat> they go a lot of tempo. They put up a lot of points the last, you know, four or so weeks. Uh, early in the week, I know. But what have you guys seen as far as you know what type of challenges they present? Um, well, like you said, they're explosive. So, you know, just putting the cap on the running back. You know, they, they quarterback like to run the ball, running back very explosive. So just limiting the explosive plays, I feel like up front, for up front first, you know, fitting the run, our staple, and everything else will follow. With their tempo, what does that change for you guys on the defensive side? I'm assuming a lot less uh, substitutions in the middle of the series, but anything else that changes as far as signals and things like that? Um, I would say not too many changes, probably more condensed, a more condensed type of signal play or, and play calling. So just – uh, be ready for that quick, quick tempo, but yeah. Bentley, you had a couple catches the other night, but it feels like overall the tight ends just haven't, in that regard, haven't been as involved this year. Are teams playing you guys a little differently this year? I'm sure they are. I think if you put that on film last year, uh, we had a lot of sneaky plays, like where the tight end slips out or things of that nature. So if you put a lot of that on film, I'm sure teams watch that and want to cover that up. Um, but. We've just had a lot of games, I think, where we've been asked to run block, and, and so we're happy to do that, and we're just trying to get in the end zone as a unit, all 11 of us. So, yeah. 
the penalties have obviously it's been an issue at times throughout the year. Certainly was the other night. At this point of the year, how do you address that as players? What types of things are you doing in practice to try to work towards that? I don't. I don't even know how you can. I mean, at this point, just. What, how is that being addressed? Yeah, there's some penalties that are going to happen no matter what. There's going to be bad calls. There's going to be stuff where your technique lacks, and so you get a holding call. Um, but the unsportsmanlike penalties, I think those who commit those are not going to play here in the future. And so um, we're going to be more strict with that, and we got to be more disciplined as a staff and as, a, as, as players to limit that because it's costing us. What do you think you're going to learn or hope to learn about this group and how they handle what happened? A couple of nights ago, like, are you? Is Saturday going to show us a lot about kind of the makeup of or Saturday? Wednesday going to show Wednesday. us a lot about the makeup yeah. of this group? Yeah, I think it will. Um, it's a, uh, it's just you can cower away or you can stand in the fire and and uh, face this adversity and and we lost to a team that we should have beat and so it, it's like I said, it's easy, it's easy to back away and it's easy to kind of throw in the towel and just retreat, but. I think who we are will be shown in the next several weeks, depending on how we play and how we show up to games. Going yeah. off of that, do you guys think it's more at this crossroad of like, you know, spiraling or, you know, bouncing back from this loss? Do you think it's more of the player's responsibility? Is it in your hands or do you think it's more of the coaches or split? Um, I definitely think it's with our hands, the players, because everybody can say what they want, but we're playing on the field and it's, we're on the field at that time. So of course it's on us. You know, now more than ever, I feel like this is where we can realize who we're playing for, remember who we're playing for, we're playing for each other, and not outside outside things we can't control, like college football playoffs, everything, all the fans, and all that. we're not playing for Twitter comments, we're not playing for Instagram, we're not like that, we're just playing for the brotherhood. So I think that, that helps us remind, remind us what we're doing it for. Reality is, too, like we're playing a kid's game. We're getting free education while we do it. Um, and there's so many other benefits, too, to playing college football, especially nowadays. And so I think that having an experience like last Wednesday and losing a game like that, kind of at least me personally, it like helps you take a step back and realize that, that we're taking it for granted. And gotta, it just doesn't feel like when we show up to games, we're, we're showing up like we want to be there or like we want to have fun or like uh, we're excited for the opportunity. So. Yeah, Caden said that the other night. Was like he felt like you guys were <clears throat> having fun recently. Why, yeah. why do you think that is? Where did that kind of get away? Um, I would just say being circumstantial. Just I feel like when you think about everything else that's out of your control, that's when you try not your hardest not to make a mistake instead of just wondering like Billy said it's a kids game and we're actually having fun with our brother. So I think when, when you start worrying about everything else and just spot playoff birds and all that, that's when you start to be like more like a business. I feel like when we when you understand that we just out here playing, having fun with each other, knowing that it's gonna end one day that's when the fun to come back, which it has this last practice. So in the history of Conference USA, there's only been one time where a team won the championship back-to-back. -back. Coach Chavel told us that. So it's obviously hard to have success and then not to uh, let those expectations affect you. So the goal is still to be the second team to ever do that in this conference. But um, we see there's challenges that are involved with that. Ed online, you can go ahead. For both of you guys, this loss, obviously the loss gets in the way of accomplishing your goal of winning each game and going 1-0 each week. Does it actually help you guys accomplish your goal of being the best version of yourself in terms of being a concrete wake-up call of what happens when you don't play to the best of your abilities? Uh, yes, yeah, like uh, to pick about what I said earlier, just help, helping us to look ourselves in the mirror and understand how close we are as a brotherhood and how close we can be, how close we wasn't, but we have time to fix it because fortunately the way the conference is playing out is everybody's beating each other, so we have we still have a chance to win the championship. So just understanding that, playing for each other, that's, has made us closer.